God redeemed all mankind through Christ. Part 2. The Lord's zeal is accomplishing His plan of salvation and restoration for everyone. Chapter 1. God has appointed the times and places of habitation of all mankind and declares that all people everywhere should repent. The good news of the gospel is for all people. Even those who we don't think are saved. God has given faith to all mankind. And is enlightening every person. We mustn't try in our mind to simplistically create an opinion of what God's ways are. Isaiah 55 My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. Acts 17 God made the world and all things in it. Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and thought of man. God isn't limited because of anyone's ignorance. All receive faith. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed having given faith to all this time of judging is good and right not harsh and unmerciful. The good news of the gospel is for all people. Luke 2 But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Christ, the true light, comes into the heart 
and enlightens every man. He loves and cares for everyone. John 1 There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. We are not taught in the Bible that this gospel and this enlightening will be withheld from those who don't choose Jesus. Chapter 2 Who can frustrate or void what God has planned? Not even my unbelief can. His plan is to break the yoke over the whole earth and over all the nations. It will not, it cannot fail. What God has planned will happen, breaking the yoke and removing the burden of our old self. Isaiah 14 The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, just as I have intended, so it has happened. And just as I have planned, so it stands. To break Assyria in my land. And I trample him on my mountains. Then his yoke has been removed from them, and his burden removed from their shoulder. This plan is for the whole earth and all the nations. Nothing has the power to make that void. This is the plan devised for the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. All the earth, this can be the physical earth, or also all of the heart. See Luke 8 verse 15, the ground, the same Greek word as the earth, is where the seed of the word is sown. It is in the heart. The ground, or the earth, describes the heart. In verses such as James 5, our heart is strengthened, just like crops growing in the earth. In Hebrews 6, when the earth produces thorns, there is a burning. 
And the book of Revelation describes the wonderful process of the kings of the earth being replaced by Christ. For the Lord of hosts has planned, and who can frustrate it, or annul it, make it void? And as for his stretched out hand, who can turn it back? See also Isaiah 46. Verses 9 to 11. Our perspective of what is happening in people's lives is not like God's perspective. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God describes how he reigns his word on us. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bear and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So is my word which goes forth from my mouth. God's word is so powerful that nothing is wasted. Nothing fails. Nothing is impossible. It does not return to me empty. But it has accomplished what I desire, and has succeeded in the matter for which I sent it. Matthew 19 It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. But with God, all things are possible. Job 42 I know that you, Lord, can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be held back. See link 3, Job 42. I have always seen things in a certain way. God causes his son to rise on both the evil and the good.
Matthew 5 You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in the heavenlies. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, He sends his rain, not only on the righteous, but also on the unrighteous. And sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Luke 6 The Most High is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. See Similar Scriptures in Salvation, Part 5 We may hope our superstitions and rituals protect us from harm. How can we stop depending on them when we know nothing has the power to prevent God's love? His love is for everyone. He has atoned for everyone's sins. He is even kind to the evil. Chapter 3 When Paul was addressing the governor, he pointed out that there shall certainly be a resurrection both of the righteous and the wicked. Even the wicked will be resurrected. Acts 24 But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets. And I have hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience, both before God and before men. Chapter 4. God has spoken. There shall be a restoration of all things back to their former state. Some are refreshed now, but all are going to be fully restored.
Acts 3. But this is how God fulfilled what he announced beforehand. By the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Therefore repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, the Anointed One, proclaimed to you before, whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all, back to their former state, about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. All mankind has been lost in sin, but all mankind will be restored. Back to the former state that God intended, without sin. Chapter 5. There is no limit or end which the government and peace of Christ cannot reach. Christ's rule and peace in the heart of man is not limited even by sin. Isaiah 9 For a child has been born to us. A son has been given to us. And the government rests on his shoulders. And his name is called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, age-lasting Father, Prince of Peace. There is no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and for evermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts accomplishes this. Nothing can prevent God accomplishing this by His will and zeal. Not even when we reject Him. Link 3. I have seen things a certain way.
But now God is changing how I see. Job 42, verses 1 to 6. Lord, I have found out from what I have experienced that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be prevented from happening. Did you know that there are people who think that someone's unbelief and hostility towards God are stronger than God's will? That is like saying that the power of Christ rising from the dead has not conquered death. But it has. I thoughtlessly confused the issues. I have been speaking things that I did not understand. Speaking of wonders that I have not yet grown enough to see. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see you. Therefore I refuse to continue in this way, and I repent. Leo Tolstoy wrote, The simplest thing cannot be made clear to the most intelligent man. If he is firmly persuaded that he knows already, without a shadow of doubt, what is laid before him. This was, God redeemed all mankind through Christ, part two. Thank you.